Our lecture then is entitled The Use of Thought Forms in the Expansion of Consciousness. I think that we have to recognize the geometry of God and the geometry of God is in the available thought forms of trapezoid, the square, and the various symbols that have been used in some of the ancient fraternities. But we have to recognize that there is some validity in the use of these thought forms in the expansion of our consciousness. Now I'll try to show you how this works. Down through the years we have had various dictations from the masters that relate themselves to thought forms. Uh, one of the masters once said, for example, he said, you people have a consciousness about the size of a thimble. When he said, you should understand that you can expand it to the size of a barrel or bigger. Now, what are we doing now but actually envisioning the hoop of the thimble, the circle itself, and the depth of the thimble, the size, the dimension of the thimble. And we are expanding it from the thimble to the barrel. Basically then, geometric forms can be utilized according to the size of familiar objects and we can qualify them with greater dimension. In other words, if we want to increase the capacity of our mind to receive, we can envision the thought form of a cup a goblet, a chalice. Now, the moment you think of a cup, you may have a tendency in your mind to associate the cup with a little cold water you're giving in my name, you know, as Jesus said. You think of the giving of something to someone else that they may need. So this in itself is an expansion or an extension of your own ideas through the symbol of the cup into the lives of others. But, Let's change that cup now and put a foot on it and make it into a chalice. And immediately you think of the purification of the Holy Spirit, the descending dove coming down into the cup, you see, and you begin to feel that it is almost like a magnetic flux. It's a flux of light, the bending of light rays into the cup to take the form of the cup. And when they bend in there, we suddenly get the idea of the accumulation of light rays. In other words, the laying of one light ray upon another, like a patine. You know how you take something and you will coat it with gold, gold plated. Well, that's overlaying or putting a patine of pure gold over our object. In this case now, the object of the cup, we are going to cause light because it is descending from the present. In the form of a dove, we're going to cause it to bend in the chalice and then it piles up. You see, the light rays just keep overlaying and overlaying and overlaying. And finally, they increase in density. But of course, when you think of light, you think of illumination. So in reality, you don't think of density, but still it is the density of light. But light doesn't have any density. You see, light has illumination, has lumens. So we realize that we can cause light mentally to accumulate at a given spot. Now the personal application and value of the use of thought forms and the expansion of consciousness relates to the human heart because the heart itself has within it a chamber and it is a chamber of great beauty. And so we see that one can have chalices within chalices. One can have geometric forms within geometric forms. Now consciousness itself is actually constrained by thought forms. I want this understood by people. It is both constrained, restrained, and expanded. In other words, you can do with consciousness a great deal by creating thought forms which relates to the geometrizing of God. It's a sort of a cosmic trigonometry. It's a magnificent thing. It's a cosmic calculus. It's a form of the divine mind being used for expansive purposes. I think probably the idea that a human being contains enough 
spaghetti inside of them, if I may use the term spaghetti rather jokingly, such as blood vessels and nerve paths and various other cylindrical networks or arterial cardiovascular networks and nerve networks through the body that if you took these all out of one human body and put them together you would be able to go to the moon and more just on the strength of the length of these noodles that are inside of us you see so we have to recognize the ability of mentally compressing objects into a very small space in a way we are a little jewel box physically speaking, but we are also a little jewel box mentally. We have a great deal more room in our jewel box from a mental standpoint than we do from a physical standpoint. But at the same time, when you involve yourself in the expansion of consciousness by thought forms, you have to recognize that the first step is to bring the thought form into consonance with your physical formation so that it becomes rational to you. If you do not deal with a rational thought form, it's like going ahead and having a nebulous cloud out here in space. What is it but a cloud of steam? You try to define it, you try to name it, you try to duplicate it in thought and feeling, and you cannot do it. But you see, when you deal with familiar objects, such as your physical body, you can relate the fact that a thought form is being brought into your physical form, and then by the power of the mind, which has the power of expansion, you can take it out of the body and put it anywhere you want in space and actually you are attracting to that thought form then the various emanations of your consciousness itself. You are creating an extension in consciousness which later becomes a method whereby you can expand the mind and being of yourself. Is this understandable? You follow me on what I'm trying to say? So you start out with a chalice. It's not very big, it's just a little cup or a glass around the heart. But you suddenly begin to decide that you are going to invoke the Spirit of God into that chalice. Well, someone may have some idea of the right and wrong of all this. They say, well, what right do I have as an individual to invoke the Spirit of God into my chalice? You have every right, because God gave it to you in the beginning. He said, let us make man in our image. He made you in his image. He made you in his likeness. He created you to be the authority in your world. And the biggest problem today in all of the whole human race is the fact that people do not want to take authority in their world. Instead of taking authority in their world, they allow other people to literally push them around with different ideas. Fads. Somebody over in Paris decides they're going to have long skirts, maxi skirts this year. So they go ahead and create the maxi skirts. And the whole world practically follows the Paris fashion fad. And the same with the miniskirts and everything else. So we have to understand that we have to take dominion over our life. And we have every right to do it in regard to these thought forms. You are then doing what God commanded you to do. He said, take dominion over the earth. Well, he wasn't talking just about the physical earth. He was talking about the earth of yourself, too. <coughs> what does it say? in the Bible. It says, and the earth standing in the water and out of the water. What's it talking about in the water and out of the water? Talking about almost a human baptism, you see. Someone standing in the water and out of the water, you see. And you have to understand that the geometrizing of God is the methodology of God. God has methods. If you will ever look under a microscope very carefully, or if you'll ever study cytology and the makeup of the various cells of the body and different cells of rocks and matter formations, you will realize that there is a natural geometry in the Lord's creation of the material of matter itself. And matter really means mater from the Latin or mother. And of course, our physicians have given this name to various parts of the body, like the dura mater of the brain and the pia mater and so on. So we have to understand all of this. Now, here we are creating mentally a chalice around the heart. Now, the value of that chalice is purely a starting value. It's valuable as a point where you can begin your expansion of consciousness. Now, you can go out and suddenly decide you're going to drown yourself in a chalice so big that you can't even imagine it hardly around yourself. 
but it has to be relevant to what you can imagine. You cannot make an infinite chalice. Now can you really? It has to be in the known universe. So you have to deal with known objects. So you start out with the physical, you make your chalice bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and one of these days you come to the point where you can actually mentally decide that you're going to be within a chalice as big as the earth. And so you do. Now you may elect, instead of standing in a chalice, to stand in a pyramid, or a cylinder, or a square, a cube, or any other geometric object. And these thought forms can become means of the expansion of your consciousness. Now I particularly want to warn the people that no one who is interested in tethering themselves to reality should indulge in this to the extent of more or less living in a world of fantasy or delusion. These should be controlled experiments in consciousness, and you should be careful to engage in them only for a limited period of time, because I'm going to tell you about the lever. I'm not talking about the rising of the King of France. I'm talking about the lever that is the lever of relativity. In other words, when you start these mental doings, you are starting a process in the macrocosm that is occurring now first in the microcosm. You will not be able to create that infinite chalice we spoke about, but your God presence can. And the pattern for these doings must, according to cosmic law, occur from your level. In other words, you have to be the authority for your world. So by the creation of these proper thought forms and the endowment of yourself with a desire to produce these states of consciousness that are representative of an expanded awareness, you have to make these forms and then release them into the universal. I recommend and I advocate holy prayer before doing so. I recommend protection from mighty Astraea so that you are not in any way being invaded by astral entities. I recommend care and consideration in the creation of these thought forms, and I recommend that after you have created them, as large as you desire at a given time, that you then turn the thought form over to your God presence for amplification. Why? Because your God presence has now received the mandate of your own authority to create. And whether you're awake or whether you're asleep or whether you're doing something else, your God presence will take it up you know what that means, to take it up? Do you know the greatest healing that can occur in the whole world, for example, occurs when the God presence does it? You and your human self can do nothing. Jesus' statement where he said, I of myself can do nothing. It is the Father in me which doeth the work, was making the statement regarding the transfer of authority by the dominion of the human will to the divine will and the power of the cosmic lever of relativity acting for man in the name of God. Do you see this? It is an involved process, but I have tried to reduce it to words that can be understandable by you. I personally have done a few things with this, most effectively, and I know that it does work. I suggest that you confine your early experiments of this nature to the more simple form because a great deal depends upon your own standards of morality, decency, and the elimination from your world of conflicting images. In other words, by eliminating conflicting images, not filling your mind with all of the crud, if I may use the word of the world, and then expecting that you're going to start in and mix up this heavenly elixir with the human idea. It will not work as effectively. It may work a little, but I would be careful. I would first try to purify the consciousness with the violet flame. I would have the highest motives in my doing, and I would make these determinations, and then I would work in the field of expanding my awareness and consciousness by the use of thought forms. These thought forms also may include such objects as wings. I have spent a great deal of time with the thought form of wings, and I find this is most valuable for elevating your consciousness. And in order to have wings, I suggest that you use 
Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, for example, or Parsifal from the Grail Movement by Richard Wagner, or the Ride of the Valkyries, or some of those specific, highly qualified classical renderings which are very inspiring and elevating to your consciousness. The Lohengrin music is also very good. You use this music and then you envision a pair of wings, maybe on <coughs> such a thing as an hourglass, and you see the wings raising the hourglass. And the idea is to elevate time into its proper use. And how better can you use it properly than to understand that God, who is eternity, represented in the rising, is also magnetized or drawn into your image and then transferred to you because you have the authority and you have given that authority to your God presence to act for you. Without your mandate, without the mandate of prayer or the mandate of your decrees or the mandate of your desires, in some manner, voice to the Spirit, there can be no manifestation. Basically, this is the same thing in a way as what was known long ago in some metaphysical movements as treasure mapping. But this is a more advanced by far method of doing it, dealing with geometric figures and thought forms. Now there are all kinds of thought forms that are valuable. As I've said before, to pregnant mothers, for example, these thought forms are particularly valuable if they will try mentally to trace the lines of some of the great Grecian statues so that they can bring these lines into the physical manifestation through first carrying it up to their God presence and then through their Holy Christ self and through their mandate, through their desire and then calling for that to be brought down into their womb and utilized as the matrix which is then carried out by the body elemental of the mother and the formative elemental of the child. Now those who understand our work in detail will get a little more out of this, I realize. But I can't this afternoon try to expand on this to the extent of drawing maps of our whole work. So I must, of necessity, confine myself as I have to the explanation involving thought forms. Now, I want to deal also with color in regard to our situation. We will say that we have this chalice made colorlessly speaking. We've created it in black and white. It is possible for us to embellish the thought form by the use of correct color. Primarily the pastel colors such as the beautiful pinks, the beautiful violets, the beautiful soft pastel yellow, and all of these colors can be actually mentally drawn within the object of our thought form. You may say to me, well, wouldn't the black and white be enough? No, because the black and white in reality is to a certain degree involved with the nature of the gray ones because while the white is all right, the moment you put any black into it at all, you are going to dilute your whole situation. You'll dilute the whole formula, you see. So I suggest that rather than use the black, you use the colors even in the formation of what you would consider to be the black and white lines that make up the form of the chalice, I would suggest that you actually use color rather than use a black as the demarcation line for your subject. So we want to use color and I want to bring in another factor here which is extremely important in the use of thought forms and that is the quality of tone. And now, after you have created, we'll say, a beautiful violet-colored chalice in the ethers involving either the heart or the heart chakra or even the third eye or any other part of our being, you can qualify that with tone. And by tone, I mean you can cause the object itself to appear as an object of pink glass, and then you can strike this mentally as though you took a metal rod and caused it to vibrate so that it will emit a tone. In other words, we are endowing our thought creation with the quality of a solid object and we are giving it the quality of creating a musical tone. You see what I mean? You can do this with any object of a geometric form that you want to. Now, it is always desirable that we call for 
such a tone as the high C vibration, for example. The idea is that if we get the right tone, it will vibrate according to certain laws of the universe that are very, very secretive and very involved with manifestation. So I'm not permitted to give you the full structure of what you can do with tone in connection with the mind here. But you can, in this mental picture, use tone, which gives a further solidity to your object from a mental standpoint, and thus whatever you send out will return to you. So by this law, if you don't use the quality of a tone in it, you see you're going to lack something of value to yourself. And the more reality you can put into the mental image, the greater chances you have of this object materializing, not necessarily in the sense that you're going to bring forth beautiful little glasses that are going to drop from the universal, like Barrett Spaulding, as we were talking about out in the desert. I'm not talking about making plates. This happens to be one of the steps, however, but I'm talking about improving and expanding awareness and consciousness through guiding your thoughts along these geometric lines which is one of the first steps that you're going to have to take before you can use the creative ability that God gave you. Later on, you can use this in symmetry, such as the molding of sculpture. You can actually mold and sculpt, if you wish, using these principles. But I think that the person who begins to work first in the realm of mind and form and cosmic symmetry has a better chance of executing this in the world of form than the person who does not. Do you follow me? So I recommend to all of you who are interested in these experiments that you engage in them a limited time rather than a maximum time because if you do engage in them a maximum time, you may find that you will be subject to various influences that I do not recommend. Now by using them just for a short time, like five or ten minutes, probably five minutes, once or twice a day, you'll begin to condition your mind and your spirit and your being to its creative abilities. And these creative abilities will come out in all of your work. You will begin to understand how to use your physical senses in an improved manner because you will understand that you are working with the fingers of the mind and with the creative ability of the mind through the use of these thought forms and later you will transfer your sensory awareness to your fingertips. Now this is the only kind of sensitivity training that we approve of. This means that... <laughs> This means that you will be able to have an expanded awareness in your lower consciousness as well as your others and increased sensitivity in your analyses of conditions and things and people. You will find that you can pick up on vibratory patterns much easier and you're going to find out that you will be less subject to the mental manipulations and magic of various people who are using witchcraft and various forms of black magic supposedly against you, for example, or against anyone in the world, because you will be stronger because you are using these images. Through the creation of these thought forms, doing it under God's direction, through your presence, you will find that you will have greater control of your creative aspects than you have ever had before. Now, don't expect this control to manifest immediately. It may not do so for a period of three or four months. But if you keep building into your consciousness your valuable experiments in the use of thought forms for the expansion of consciousness, purely for the use of good now, not for evil, you will be developing a strengthening in your mental body and in your creative faculties. Is that clear? I recommend to you then that you try this, but don't make it a god to yourself. This is only one of the aspects of life. There are many. This is only one of the creative aspects. So now you are dealing with the tone, you're dealing with the color. In our recognition of the use of these creative faculties, a great deal is to be obtained. Man is actually preparing for divinity. In reality, he was made in the divine image. What a silly thing that people are stressing all of this in sin did my mother conceive me. Well, condemnation really is a tool of the forces of evil and it is not to be used by the spiritual aspirant on the spiritual path. He should not use it against others or against himself. Condemnation is stultifying. It prevents a man from actually realizing what things are all about. So I think maybe just out of the interest of further 
enhancing your creative ability, I will give you a little skit that I sometimes do for the benefit of some people. They'll come up to me and they'll ask me a question and they'll say, do you know this or do you know that? And I'll say, well, not knowing with any great degree of certainty, I therefore hesitate to respond to you, fearing that I might thereby prevaricate and suffer dire calamity, which is not to do with the indubitable angelic acclamation of the ineffable austerity of the approaching woes or the uncontrovertible inexhaustibility of divine providence. By now, I hope that your sufficiency is quite so fancified because any more would be a vulgar superfluity. <laughs> This is the sort of thing that really doesn't do anything for you, but it probably entertains you a little bit. So in the main, I want to bring to your attention that creative ability is possible through the use of geometric figures. And I want to take up also at this time the spiral, because this is a delightful mechanism. We are dealing now with a circle or the laws of eternal cycle. So we can create a golden cycle and then we create this cycle and we attach it mentally to the next cycle. And the way to do it is with the spiral. Then you have a natural flow, you see. You have no interruption if you do it with circles. Can you imagine piling circles one on top of each other like a bunch of dinner plates? You begin to wonder after a while if they're all going to fall down. So instead of that, you just connect them in one beautiful flow, and it's a spiral staircase that leads to the star. Well, you know, you will be absolutely amazed when you begin working with these figures to realize that God used geometry so wonderfully. He used it so wonderfully to illustrate to humanity their own natural abilities to scale the stars in creative thought. Because this is very practical. Through these exercises, uneducated men can suddenly become educated. Why? Because we are dealing with the automation processes. I think most of you are familiar with the Russian scientist Pavlov and the conditioned reflexes. Now, unfortunately, Lavrentia Beria utilized the Pavlovian theories. It was a matter of having a dog and then having sensing devices placed in his mouth. And these uh, sensing devices placed in his mouth would register the saliva in the dog's mouth. So Pavlov found that by ringing the bell, a dinner bell, and then feeding the dog, that he could measure first the saliva that would always come whenever the dog would be fed. Well, later on, he took away the food and rang the bell, and he still got the saliva. So he began to understand the matter of conditioned responses, you see. Now, this has been used in a negative way by Lavrentia Beria, who used to be with the NKVD of the secret police, or the Opu, or whatever you want to call it. And they used it in a wrong way, and they used it as a hypnotic device to manipulate and control political prisoners in times of war and to influence people in various nations where they could use these principles against them. But that was a very limited thing. That was only a first step for a man to understand the spirals of the cosmos and the controls that can be actually used by us for our betterment, to help ourselves, and also to guard against the influences of other people who have nefarious ideas, who don't yet understand the principles that God has given to us of living and let live. We have no right in this world to try to really control anybody else against their free will. God doesn't practice it, does he? But we have every intent of practicing for ourselves the taking of dominion over our world and the developing of our own creative ability. If we don't develop it, somebody else isn't going to develop it for us, are they? You believe they are? They can't, can they? It's impossible. We have to develop for ourselves. So each of you will have to follow these experiments. It's like the dead language of Latin, for example. You take a Latin scholar and you have the Latin scholar go ahead and learn to speak Latin. Well, you say it's a dead language. Who wants to speak Latin? But the mental gymnastics involved in the speaking of Latin prepare him for the understanding of almost every other language on the face of the earth. You see what I mean? And they give him the ability to think properly. I am very appreciative of my Latin teacher who used to whip me when I was a smaller lad. You see, it'd be kind of hard to whip me right now, but uh, <laughs> at that time she could whip me. I think we should understand the need to make ourselves do these things just the same as we eat our daily bread. We've got to become a well-rounded person, a person that is able to utilize the mechanics of the spirit in the creating of form. 
I happen to believe that even when you come to the point of your ascension and you come to the point where you have risen to be more or less a god of another solar system. You hear what I said? I said a god of another solar system. You. Yes, you. That's who I'm talking to. You are going to have to somewhere along the pathway, if you're going to be this, you've got to master all of these things that deal with the control and creation of form and substance. And form and substance is very important to spirit because spirit created it for a reason. There is a raison d'etre to that, you see, to the creation of substance. And actually what we're trying to do in these thought forms is to give you a creative power and a control of your own life and your life energies. It's a pantomime that eventually will become a very effective means of helping you to grow spiritually. Yes, it could be used negatively, but if you do, you'll pay and pay and pay. So I pray to God that nobody will ever use it in a negative way. But just use this knowledge to try to take your first toddling steps in dealing with energy from a higher level. God bless you and thank you for your attention.